1 Corinthians chapter 7. Now concerning the things where ye wrote unto me, okay, Corinthians, writing back and forth with Paul, Paul thought in communication with all the churches. So, so far what we do dwelt, we've dwelt with what Paul's heard, what's going on. Now they have a question. Now concerning the things where you wrote me, it is good for a man not to touch a woman. That's kind of interesting. <clears throat> Nevertheless, to avoid fornication, let every man have his own wife, and let every woman have her own husband, all in the singular. All a male and a female, and a female and a male. Nope. Can't get any clearer than that. I wonder what the new Bibles are going to be saying. I mean, the newer, newer Bibles. The allow sodomite marriages. I wonder what the Mormon church would say about this verse. Let the husband render unto the wife due benevolence, and likewise also the wife unto her husband. So, care, as far as a man and a woman, is to be to a husband and wife, and a wife to her husband. The wife has not power of her own body, but the husband. And likewise also the husband has not power over his own body, but the wife. So there is authority in the house. Now, Verse 3 again, I didn't want to miss this. It says, Let the husband render unto the wife due benevolence. If you take off the B E N E and add an I, you get violence. If you're not taking care of your wife, you're not loving her. The opposite of benevolence is violence. I just thought that was interesting when I was reading. Something I, I, I saw on my own. Defraud ye not one the other. It's said to be for a consent for a time. That you may give yourself to fasting and prayer. Come together again. That Satan tempt you not for your incontensity. There is a fasting of food and drink. And there is a fasting of the marriage bed between a husband and wife. But Paul's writing this, if you're going to do that, it's serious prayer that you two have come together. You need to get back. You need to set a time. Because once you do that, Satan will come in. And when you're in 2016 and you got the internet and you got billboards and you got, you know, office workplaces. I mean, you've been in workplaces where, you know, they've got a whole wall filled of filthy pictures. Satan will be bound to strike. And strike hard but it's interesting when we talk about fast that there is a fasting of the marriage bed and that has to be mutual that has to be the husband and wife together say you know what we really got a serious prayer with me and maybe not just the food and drink but let's but I speak by this I speak but I speak this by permission and not comm commandment all right so this is not a commandment Paul's seeking permission the only one I can think He's seeking permission through is the Holy Spirit. For I would that all men were even as I, myself. So Paul is either single or he's a widower. He's not married. But every man has his proper gift of God. Okay? So we're talking about husband and wives. And... I used to hear when I grew up as a child, the battle axe, the old lady, and all the kind of names. And, and I've heard some some Christian men talk bad about their wives. Men's prayer breakfast and stuff like that. I'm just saying. And they haven't read the scripture say, in the eyes of God, that is a gift. Well, no, wait a minute. Wait. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. That's a gift of eternal life. We've read, I think it's Romans, they said the Holy Spirit is the gift. Well, here's a gift of God, a wife. And how do we treat that wife, some of us? Like December 26th, we're going to re return it back to the store. And that's not what it is. She's to be received as from God. And a, a passage in Proverbs says, if a man receives a wife, he has received a good thing. There's nothing wrong with a wife. Some men have a contrary, and I, I don't understand that. One after this manner, and another after that. 
And I would assume by that one in Proverbs 18, verse 22, I've got here is some wives do things that other wives don't do that other wives would do. No woman is the same. I say, therefore, to the unmarried and widows. This is the state that Paul's in. Which one? I don't know. It is good for them if they abide even as I. Don't get married. That's the vice of Paul. It's not mine. He said, this is not a commandment. I'm, I'm getting permission, but I would you rather be like me. But if they cannot contain, let them marry. For it is better to marry than to burn. And that's not hellfire. That's lust. You're not burning desire. Burning passion. Flames of love. If you can't control that attitude of your life, get married. But if a life, you know, without the marriage bed and all that, you can be satisfied, you can be pleasing, and Paul says remain unmarried. Now unto the married, I command yet not I, but the Lord. All right, this is of the Lord. Let not the wife depart from her husband. But, and if she depart, let her remain unmarried, separation, or be reconciled to her husband, let not the husband put away his wife. But to the rest speak I, not the Lord. Paul speaking again. If a brother, say person, have a wife that believeth not, and she be pleased to dwell with him, let him not put her away. Right? You got a brother, he's saved, the wife is not saved. Probably after the, you know, after they were married, he's gotten saved. Somebody in the church said, "Well, my wife's unsaved. What do I do?" Well, if she's pleased to be with you, stay to marriage. And the woman which has a husband and believe it not, if he be pleased to dwell with her, let her not leave him. For the unbelieving husband is sanctified by the wife, set apart. I don't know how. And it's not salvation. Because he's got to believe in the lost spouse has to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ as their Savior. The, the saved spouse can't do it, but they're set apart. An unbelieving wife is sanctified by her husband. Else were your children unclean, but now they are holy. I have no idea what verse 14 is talking about. Not I read the the, the the commentators and all that, and that, that threw me more into a woo. That's so weird. It's one of those things that I put a question mark in my Bible right by. I don't know, but I do have a note here, and it's, it's got one word. It says agreement. So I don't know. But if the unbelieving depart, this is a non-agreement. Let him depart. <clears throat> Excuse me. A brother or sister is not under bondage in such case. Now look what God says here. After I stop he cupping. You got a marriage that's a saved and a lost person. God says it's a bondage. But God has called us to peace. Either being single like Paul is. Or being married with two saved people. That's peace. But a mixed marriage is no peace. For what knowest thou, O wife, whether thou shalt save thy husband? And you know a woman can't save a man, but her conduct. Or knowest thou, O man, whether thou shalt save thy wife? You know, you can't save her, your conduct. But as God has distributed to every man, as the Lord has called everyone, so let him walk, and so ordain I in all church. If God's called you to be married and have a spouse, it's his gift. If he hasn't called you to be married, I guess you don't get a gift. And then we go back to, is any man called be circumcised? Now, why does that keep coming up? That shows up in Acts, that shows up in Romans, that shows up in 1 Corinthians. If any man called being circumcised, let him not become uncircumcised. Is any called uncircumcision, let him not be circumcised. Now, Paul had Timothy circumcised because the Jews knew that Timothy's father was a Greek. 
So the deal with the fact is that he's going to be dealing with Jews. He ought to have the circumcision that the Jews have. And the conduct here is, if you're going to go somewhere in the world, you may have to get rid of some of your American principles, some of your American ways, and be living like them. You may go to a place they don't have silverware. You may go to a place where they eat their meat raw or have been sitting out on a, on a cart all day with flies and all that. You may go to a place where, you know, hand singles that we use in America that are good may be bad over there. Like I know one of you, were, you know, the OK sign. Don't you make that in Germany. That's cussing. You tell them OK like that in Germany. You get, There's things you got to do. Uh, I want to be hard because... Cause there, there's a passage in the Bible that Paul says, uh, and the hippies use, well, I'll, I'll go smoke dope and, you know, wear raggedy clothes and all that so I can reach. And that's not what it's saying. Is God has something for us and we need to do what God's told us to do. And if it's not something that God has told us to do, then don't do it. It's simple. Circumcision is nothing. And uncircumcision is nothing. But the keeping of the commandments of God. Do what God said, go in all the world and preach the gospel. God said, study to show thyself a proof unto God. A workman that needs not to be ashamed, rightly divine the word. The Bible says, husbands, love your wives. The Bible says, wives, love your husbands. The husbands, treat the wife as a weaker vessel. Husbands, train up these, these newborn babes in Christ. Christians, live a proper life. Christians, know that God has bought you. These little circumcision and stuff like that, that's, that's nothing. Let every man abide in the same calling where he was called. So you've got to know what God's called you to do. What is it? And you got to read and you got to pray the Bible for God to reveal that calling to you. And you got to be clean for God to even show you what the calling is. And once you find out your calling, stick to it. Mine, I know, is, is preaching on the streets right here in Daytona Beach. Right now, as far as I see, that it's the day I die or the day to the rapture. One day, God may put his hand on the shoulder and say, that's it, there, there's nothing there. i got somewhere else for you to go. How will God, how will God tell me you're done there? Well, I'm dead or rapture. Two, I have no, other, I have no way. I don't even remember how I started the... the the farmer's market. I can't even tell you how I started the sign ministry. This Somehow, I don't even remember God. Okay, make some signs, stand on the street corner, and pass out gospel tracts. Then I know I know one day for a fact, I, I stood on the corner in Norwich, and the Lord says, we had a little traffic island. We could sit right there. It was perfect. The police were concerned, but we took the risk. I stopped here at the corner. God said, put that sign down. He put the sign down. He said, I want you to open up your mouth and start preaching. I said, Lord, that's not you. I walked back to the car. He said, no, you're going to preach. I said, no, I'm not. I walked back to the corner, and I did this, this for five minutes, back and forth, back and forth, walking. I stood there saying, no, I can't do it. I don't know what to do. Lord, and I just stood there. And then finally... I said, Lord, no one's going to listen. There's no one here. I don't even remember what the weather, what the season was. But I said, there's no one here. Dunkin' Donuts is closed. You know, the doors are closed. They're, they're inside. They can't hear me. The tax place. They're, they're, you know, there's no one walking. There's no one here. There's no one looking for work behind me. There's no one going into the package store over here. There's no, no one's going to hear me, Lord. Why do you want me to do this? I want you to do it. I, I open up my mouth. And I proclaim, for God so loved the world. And then I looked up, and there's all these windows opening up in the apartment buildings up above. And I don't know what I said after that. I don't know how long I preached after that. But whatever I said, John 3, 16, anything other than that, I knew those people heard that. And God said, I like that. I need you there. And God said, 
Listen, he told me, and this is not audio. He rings in my voice. He calls me on the telephone. He says, I want you to move to the courthouse. I want you to go over there. That, that, that's where I want trash now. I want you to talk to the hot dog vendor. I want you to talk to these people. I want you to be a witness there. We did that. The Lord said, you're done. How did the Lord say you were done there when the U.S. Marshals came and tried to arrest us? And we went to the lawyers and they said, yep, yeah, no, you can't be there. Yeah, they're right. You got to move. So we went back over to, to, the, to the, uh, the divider. Then somehow, I forget, I don't know how it was, go to NFA, the, the, the school. We went on NFA. We went on the little island over there, and we got busted over there by Norwich police because that property belongs to the school during certain times of the day. I stood in an in office in the Norwich Police Department where the guy sat at the desk and told me, he said, I will be happy to arrest you. I pulled out my little thing and said, well, the Supreme Court says I have a right to do what I'm doing. He said, I don't care about the Supreme Court. If they tell me to arrest you, I will do it with joy. I said, well, I said, well, what we can do? He said, why don't you go back and talk to the, the principal of the school? So I went back to the principal of the school, sat at his desk and talked to him. I said, wait a minute. I said, sir. I said, you got three islands here. Here's a church and we're not infirmary with anything. I understand that this island is yours. I said, what about that island over there? No, nope, that's not ours. So I said, I can have permission to stand right there? Yeah. And that's how that ministry and the Lord worked that. How did you know the end of that ministry? I had no idea until the final day of that ministry. We started, I don't know what day we started, but we started that ministry. And we followed that ministry for four years. The freshmen that went into that school, we were at their graduation on the side road where we were not allowed during school time, passing out gospel tracts to the ones that graduated four years later. And then we came down to Florida. We had some ministries like that. Right now, I, I'm praying. I, I'm, I'm liking the, the ministry he's given to me right now. That's the calling. And when God gives you that calling, man, he sends you into it. And when you miss a day because you're sick, it hurts. And you start apologizing to God. And God understands. There was one president, I forget which one it was, during his inauguration speech, in his January is coming up, it was raining, it was cold, and that guy just spoke for hours, long-winded. I think within a week or month, he died. <laughs> that did a lot of good. God will equip you. If you're not in that ministry, you'll, you'll be at fault. I was in a nursing home kind of rehab ministry and I just had too much of a love for the people there I mean I, I felt sorry for them that's not my kind of thing circumcision is nothing now wait let every man abide in the same calling where he is called so looks like marriage is a calling too and yet there's one church that proclaims for their people not to be married and we'll see in Timothy, we get there. That's a sin. There's one religion that says you can marry multiple wives. Kind of roundabout way to go about the law. Art thou called to be a servant? Care not for it. But if thou mayest be free, use it rather. All right, you're going to serve? Serve. Do it. If you're free, praise God. For he that is called in, turn page. One of those old cassette tapes you used, you used to read in children. You read the story and say, turn page. Lord, being a servant, I'm old. Being a servant is the Lord's free man. Likewise also he that is called being free is Christ's servant. We are Christ's servant no matter what. We are called to serve Christ. Now we need to find out what God wants us to do in that work. Now again, if your life, and I've heard some Christians, their life is in a hospital bed. They can't go nowhere. They are bound to us. Well, you know, I know what their calling would be. Read the Bible and pray. And tithe if they get money. If you're young and you got good legs and you got good strength, go walk and knock on doors before those legs give out. That's a great calling. 
ye are brought with a price. Now, bought with a price, that's back over here. <clears throat> but know ye not, you're the body, the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which ye have of God, and you are not your own, for you are bought with a price. Verily, verily. What is the price? Acts 20:28. 20, the blood of Jesus Christ. Now, are you going to walk up to God and say how much money you gave to UNICEF? Really? Giving money so you know so kids can eat in India when they got hamburger rocking around. That is far above the blood of God that paid. I don't think so. You're not going to see one of those those credit card signs and ATM signs at the throne of God. You're going to see blood. It's the blood and nothing else. And there are religions out there. It's water. It's Mary. It's not it. What is the price I bought? Sinless blood. And we just had the Lord's Supper at, at our church and and what I do is when I'm when they're passing the bread and and the, uh, the uh, grape juice out, I look at ours. They break it in little flakes. And you ever look at that? Look at it, your church. I don't know how your church. You ever look at that flake and just realize where was all the flakes of skin of Jesus Christ? From the high priest judgment home to Calvary. Do you realize all the places that holy flesh went? Went on a cat of nine tails. It was upon a, a, a thing they put over his face to punch him. It was put on thorns. It's flesh. It got stuck to the wood on, on the tree. It got put onto the, the nails that were driven into him. And you ever think about the blood of Jesus Christ? It was upon that fold that they covered his head it was on the fists of the soldiers it was it probably dripped off the thorns that were put upon his face and then when he finally when he was dead they pierced his side and that blood came out saying I am washed I went to the foot doctor today and, and they, I'm not gonna get but if I didn't have neuropathy and they didn't get, and if they would not give me a needle, they don't give me a needle because I don't need it. But Novocaine, if I would have done today what my wife does for me to help me out and the doctor with the nurse had to do for me, I would scream. You probably would hear me counties away. Because I'm a wimp when it comes to pain. And yet Jesus Christ stood there and took it so that I might be saved. The body, the Bible says his body was ripped open. That was bought with a price. And you're going to mock God when you're going to go up to God and think your Eunice, your good deed, your work. I don't think so. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Brethren, let every man, let every man wherein he is called a Therein abide with God. Stay with God. Don't quit. And you're going to get the tension. I've had the tendency to quit. I've had to throw the towel in. But don't. Keep going. It's normal to give up. It's normal to get tired. It's normal. Brethren, every man where he's called, there abide, therein abide with God. <clears throat> now concerning virgins, I have no commandment of the Lord. Okay. Yet I give my judgment. This is Paul's opinion. As one that has attained mercy of the Lord to be faithful. Listen, God has allowed me to write these books. God has allowed me to write this epistle. God has allowed me to stay in Corinth. God has allowed me to start Corinth. I am speaking of me. This is not God, but I suppose, therefore, that this is good for the present distress. I say that it is good for a man so to be. Remain virgin. When he's writing this, there's persecution. You get married with persecution, with troubles. They can use your wife and children to get you recant Jesus. 
and we do, really don't also don't know the state of the Corinth church as they're living there's Jews there and if a Jew got saved then that's it you're out you're gone you have no family you have no business you have no job you have no income art thou bound unto a wife seek not to be loose art thou loose from a wife seek not a wife but if thou marry thou hast not sinned well the Roman Catholic Church tells their their priests and their nuns not to marry it's a sin who's wrong who's right if a virgin marry she has not sinned I like that if a virgin marry that's a little inside joke there by God a virgin marry so tell me you're in the Bible where you can find virgin Mary right there if a virgin marry she has not sinned nevertheless such shall have trouble in flesh but I swear it fighting troubles arguments but this I say, brethren, the time is short. Life is short. It remains that both they that have wives to be as though they had none, and they that weep as though they wept not, and they that rejoice as though they rejoice not, and they that buy as though they possess not. You're happy one moment, uh, you're in tears the next moment. You got it now, you lose it. It's up and down, up and down. The world's not good. And they that use this world as not abusing it for the fashion of this world passing away. You know, we got to live in a world. We got to make the, mon the world's money. We've got to buy the world's food. But I would have, I, but I would have you without carefulness. He that is unmarried carries for the things that belong to the Lord how he may please the Lord I can give more money to tithing I can give more money to missionaries I can give more time to the work of the church but he that marrieth carries for the things that are of the world that he may please his wife you may have to give that twenty dollars you want to give to the missionary you might have to say you know what she deserves a break today. I'm going to take her out to eat. There's a difference also between a wife and a virgin. Look at the two things. A woman is described as she's as a wife or a virgin. An unmarried woman cares for the things of the Lord that she may be holy both in body and spirit. But she that marrieth cares for the things of the world that she may please her husband. Same thing. There's a love there. There's God. There's Jesus. There's the husband. There's the wife. And you can't completely ignore your spouse. In the name of God, of course. You can't do that. And this I speak for your own profit not that I may cast a snare upon you but for that which is comely and that ye may attend upon the Lord without distraction you can't make your spouse's life so bitter so rotten that you know it's just interfering with prayers it's interfering with serving the Lord there's no peace there's no love but if you got harmony together then there's no distraction. But if a man think that he behaved himself uncommonly toward his virgin, if she pass the flower of her age and need so require, let him do what he will. He sinneth not, let them marry. <clears throat> Nevertheless, he that standeth steadfast, stubborn, in his heart, 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 having no necessity, not by force but has power over his own will and has so decreed his heart 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 that he may keep his virgin doeth well so that he that giveth her in marriage doeth well but he that giveth her not in marriage doeth better well which is better well or better that's what Paul says. Paul is urging 
don't get married think about it the wife is bound by the law as long as her husband liveth but if her husband be dead she is at liberty to be married to whom she will only in the Lord second Corinthians 6 14 Ruth 3 10 but she is happier if she so abide after my judgment and I th think also that I have the Spirit of God instead of getting married she'd be happier she'd be like me again single whether married or or widowed that's what that's in Paul you know Paul's honest is to say no this is not God speaking Did you see that but he's in so with God that we can look at it and say, yeah, okay, that's almost inspirational, but approved by the Holy Spirit for it to be there in chapter 7. 